Marcus Conti reporting. Donald Trump has spoken. The great oracle Donald Trump has spoken on the mass shootings in Texas and in Ohio. Ohio. So the first three minutes were just him uh, giving his uh, condolences to the victims and such. And uh, But here's where it gets interesting. Here's where he's going to, from about three minutes on, he talks about what he's going to actually do about the problem. Let's listen. Terrible thing. I have also been in close contact with Attorney General Barr and FBI Director Ray. Federal authorities are on the ground, and I have directed them to provide any and all assistance required, whatever is needed. The shooter in El Paso posted a manifesto online consumed by racist hate. In one voice, our nation must condemn racism, bigotry, and white supremacy. These sinister ideologies must be defeated. Hate has no place in America. Hatred warps the mind, ravages the heart, and devours the soul. We have asked... It does make you wonder what what he means by hate when so much of his rhetoric is, is, is hateful, really. It's perceived as hateful about... You know about the 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 meaning way in which he talks about other others. I mean, it's just it is fascinating. I mean, I, I know people don't agree with that, but it, I find it fascinating. I find what he says as look. If he was a stand-up comic, it would be one thing, and, and then it's humor. But he's the president of the United States. Shouldn't he have some some responsibility to not, you know, uh, uh, diss on Mexicans and, and you know and foreigners? I, I don't know. Ask the FBI to identify all further resources they need to investigate and disrupt hate crimes and domestic terrorism. See, that's troubling right there. He said that he's given the FBI uh, and the AG department um, permission to investigate and disrupt hate crimes and domestic violence. Really? Domestic, domestic terrorism. Really, how exactly are you going to do that? How, how are you going to do that? Who are you going to disrupt? Whatever they need. We must recognize that the Internet has provided a dangerous avenue to radicalize, disturb minds, and perform demented acts. You heard it here first. Here comes the censorship. We must shine light on the dark recesses of the Internet and stop mass murders before they start. Dark recesses of the internet? What is the dark recesses of the internet? Things where people gather and speak the truth or have a, a difference of opinion or a creative uh, uh, you know, exchange of ideas, uh, you know, profound ideas like QAnon or Antifa, whatever the fuck, whatever you want to talk about. That's called freedom of speech, Mr. President. The internet, likewise, is used for human trafficking, illegal drug distribution, and so many other heinous crimes. The perils of the internet and social media cannot be ignored, and they will not be ignored. So there you go, Trumpsters. Instead of him fighting for you, now he's blaming you. He's blaming, Donald Trump is blaming the people of this great country for their um, for their communication to each other on the internet. It's the internet's fault. And what is the internet? The internet is not a thing. The internet is you. We are the internet. So he's blaming it's we the people. Right? It's not it that's his that's his summation so far. In the two decades since Columbine, our nation has watched with rising horror and dread as one mass shooting has followed another over and over again decade after decade we cannot allow ourselves to feel powerless we can and will stop this evil contagion in that task we must honor the sacred memory of those we have lost by acting as one people open wounds cannot heal if we are divided we must seek real bipartisan solutions we have to do that in a bipartisan manner that will truly make America safer and better for all. First, we must do a better, He's Mr. Divider. better job of 
identifying and acting on early warning signs. I am directing the Department of Justice to work in partisan partnership with local, state, and federal agencies, as well as social media companies to develop tools that can detect mass shooters before they strike. Develop tools? Ah, what do you mean by that? So the FBI and the, you need the FBI and the AG to come in and do whatever they need to do, but now you're asking uh, internet companies to develop tools? What, do you, what exactly does that mean? What kind of tool? As an example, the monster in the Parkland High School in Florida had many red flags against him, and yet nobody took decisive action. Nobody did anything. Why not? Second, we must stop the glorification of violence in our society. This includes the gruesome and grisly video games that are now commonplace. Gruesome and grisly video games. Oh, that's the problem. Gruesome and gr grisome video games. Violent video games. That's, uh, what about movies? What about, what about the, the Terminator with, uh, with the good governor from California, Arnold Schwarzenegger, that kills 400 people in every, in every movie? All right, the glorification of the guns, the guns on the back, the gun slinging. All right, that's what's causing the problem? Is that the problem? It is too easy today for troubled youth to surround themselves with a culture that celebrates violence. So should we should just become Puritans. We should all have uh, religious programs on TV. Maybe we should all just pray to pray to Allah or pray to Jesus on a, at night before we go to sleep. And that's the fuck the internet. Why talk to each other? Why should you even talk to each other? Why should people communicate and have a free internet? when it's just, it's plagued with ideas. And some of those ideas are glorifications of guns and such. Now, do kids get the idea of glorifying uh, murder and mass murder? Yeah, sure, but that's fr there is a freedom of speech. See, the, the bigger thing is to not prevent people from doing that, but inspiring them not to do it, right? You don't, you don't make a law, oh, you have guns in your video, or you say fuck in your video and we're going to ban you. Or you speak truth and we're going to demonetize you. No, you inspire people through your example. And it's hard, to argue, it's hard to argue in favor of Trump being an example, being an example of, uh, you know, anti-hate. I mean, he is the, he's the poster child for, for venomous, you know, <laughs> hate, really. I mean... We must stop or substantially reduce this, and it has to begin immediately. Cultural change is hard, but each of us can choose to build a culture that celebrates the inherent worth and dignity of every human life. That's what we have to do. Why don't you stop giving tax breaks to the, to the billionaires and the, and the trillionaires and, and let that money hit the real economies? Tax the shit out of the rich, right? That's the problem, Mr. President. That is the problem, Donald, is that the, the country is, is living in abject poverty. Certainly, you don't feel it because you're, you're a rich guy. You, your kids, your daddy, daddy's privilege. Uh, you got fucking, come on, come on, Donald. You don't know what it's like to struggle. That's, that's what people are experiencing. You should read the manifesto. You should read the kid's manifesto about what, he, what he's actually saying. Why don't you listen to what the pe people are saying rather than telling them what to do. Third, we must reform our mental health laws to better identify mentally disturbed individuals. <laughs> the, the half, the, half the country is calling Donald Trump mentally ill. Right? Aren't the Democrats say he's mentally unfit to, to lead, he's, he's, he's mentally psychotic, he's crazy? Right? I, guess he, he, I guess Trump gets put on the list, right? First on the list, Donald Trump who may commit acts of violence and make sure those people not only get treatment, but when necessary, involuntary confinement. Involuntary confinement, right? So if, if the Democrats had their way, they can involuntarily confine Donald Trump because they think he's crazy, right? Mental illness and hatred pulls the trigger, not the gun. Fourth, we must make sure that those... Well, at least he didn't attack the gun yet. Let's hear what, he, let's, let's hear what else he has to say. ...was judged 
to pose a grave risk to public safety do not have access to firearms, and that if they do, those firearms can be taken through rapid due process. That is why I have called for red flag laws, also known as extreme risk protection orders. Explain, that is when the police get a call, somebody that doesn't like you, for example, calls the police and says, he's crazy, he's, he has a gun, and he's going to shoot up the place. I know, because he told me so. And the police come and they knock your door down, they take, they take your gun, and if you don't give up your gun, they shoot you dead uh, in front of your door. Those are red flag laws. That's what Trump, Donald Trump's all about. But, but no, 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 it's not the gun. It's not the gun, it's the mental illness. But if the mental ill, apparently, from the red flag, that got red flagged by some jerk-off down the street, says you're crazy, they can come and knock your door down. You can't do anything about it because you've been flagged red. Today, I'm also directing the Department of Justice to propose legislation ensuring that those who commit hate crimes and mass murders face the death penalty. Ah, there we go, the death penalty. So the way to combat killing is to kill a little more. Do it swiftly, too. Do it fast. Do it hard. And that this capital punishment be delivered quickly, decisively, and without years of needless delay. I think we should go back to chopping off heads. What do you think, Donald? We'll just chop off heads. We'll do it on the White House, and we'll have a mass grave for the... Where, the, where we could walk... You could stand close up, like the old king... Like the old queens used to do. They used to stand close to the he head chopping block, the guillotine, and they would uh, get splattered with the blood, right, to, to show how, how in touch they were to the, uh, to the justice that they were dealing out. And the queen would come out dressed in white and it would be all full of the victim's blood. Why don't you, Trump should do that. These are just a few of the areas of cooperation that we can pursue. I am open and ready to listen and discuss all ideas that will actually work and make a very big difference. Republicans and Democrats have proven that we can join together in a bipartisan fashion to address this plague. Last year, we enacted the Stop School Violence. All right, that's about all. That's about all I can take it as. So, so Trump is, yeah, there he is. And I, I'm playing devil's advocate, of course. A lot of what he's saying is not un, unrealistic. But it, I, I'm going to, the devil's advocate, he is advocating that He's, he's advocating to correct a moral uh, defect. Something is wrong in this country, right? If we're to say that the, the shootings are, these are organic things springing up, and certainly a lot of late, you know, and it always seems to pop up right around elections, right? I know it's all suspicious. I know that. But the solution is to, is more law enforcement, you know, more FBI, who the American people don't trust at all, the, the uh, Attorney General AG, who half the country don't, doesn't trust whatsoever. And these are the people that are going to come in and decide who is, who is mentally ill, who is uh, fit to have a gun, and this is going to solve the problem, right? We're going to do red flag laws. We're going we're gonna, to, if you're flagged, we're going to come in, we're going to knock your door down, maybe shoot you and take your gun away to protect somebody else from being shot. We're going to censor the internet. We're going to censor the internet, right? Because it's the internet, man. It's the fucking internet causing it. All these guys on, in the dark recesses of the internet are causing, causing the problem, right? That's what the problem is, right? It's the dark recesses of the internet. God damn it, right? And, it's, uh, and, and video games, too. It's, video games are very violent, man. If you, show, if you show a kid a gun, they're going to want to use a gun. Well, what about the military, right? Don't they, don't they indoctrinate 17 and 18-year-old kids in the military and, and, and go to fight wars and the war machine and, and such? It's a, look, it's, 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 it's such a, in my view, it's a simple solution. It's, it's a rather simple solution. And that solution is that you have to, you have to get money out of politics. You have to, you have to give people basic uh, a basic living, a basic uh, feeling of well-being in their country. You got to stop putting immigrants to the front of the line. That part of it, I agree, because that that just simply pisses people off, and it also shows that 
you don't have a, a American citizens don't have a vested interest in this country. I, I agree with that. That uh, there should be a a uh, a very clear cue. Most countries are like that. I mean, I I've traveled to Thailand. I spent time. Uh, time in Thailand, and, and you are in the back of the line as an American. The only reason you even have, you're on the line is because you have money. And if you go there with no money, you're, you're not even a welcome in the country, right? So they, there is sometimes two prices for, you know, uh, uh, Thai people and for uh, uh, everybody else. So there's, you know, there's clear, I mean, most countries have a system of, of uh, nationalism in place, in this country, for some reason, we were not allowed to have it because uh, we're just not allowed to have it. So I think that uh, you know, again, it's it's a we we deal with a financial problem. If you want to, if you want to eliminate the people fighting over crumbs, because that's what it is, people fighting over very little. Nineteen, you know, nineteen out of twenty donuts, the 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 banker takes for himself. Right, and then that last donut, you and the immigrant have to fight for, right? Of those twenty donuts, right? that's what it is. They have the we have a system of, of a very very privileged one percent of the population. Three people have more wealth than half the country. I mean, it's just it's despicable income and wealth inequality. And someone like Donald Trump doesn't even he doesn't even mention it. He never mentions corporate oligarchy. He never mentions the problems of, of uh, giving tax breaks to the wealthy. He never mentions any of these things. The, the, the need for universal single-payer health care, the need to, to take debt off the back, backs of young people. Right? It's, just, it's, just a, it's just a hollow... I don't, I don't understand how people... Again, I'm, I'm genuinely entertained by Trump, uh, but nothing more than that. I think he's, you know, I, I just fail to see how people continue to, to believe that, that uh, this leadership, in all aspects of his leadership, is, is good for the country. Right? And now he shows his colors in terms of uh, how he's going to solve the problem of, uh, of, of gun violence in America. And it's, it's to punish you. That's how he's going to do it. We're going to punish you, your internet, your friends, your communication. Nothing that the government is doing. Nothing that the government is implement, you know, imposing on the people. But it's it's what you're doing with each other. That's the problem. It's crazy, man. So uh, that's my two cents on that one. Marcus Conti reporting.